Okay? Very inexpensive brushes. And the Lang Nickels are pretty inexpensive brushes. The only downside of the Lang Nickels is a lot of times the hair pulls out when you are wiping with a paper towel. So I don't know if you can see this, but in this one here I have taken it and I have crimped the edge of it to keep and lock the hairs in, whereas this one has not been crimped yet. And you can do that with a pair of pliers or pair of pliers work the best. Sometimes I use sometimes the tube wringer for my paints to squeeze it on there and pinch it down. And that'll keep the hairs from falling out. Buy a few of them and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Lastly are these kinds of brushes. These are nylon brushes. And what I use those for, sometimes I want a smooth background. And these are like little brushes you, I think, are very inexpensive, like watercolor brushes. And mostly I just want something to lay the paint down quick and smooth it so that it stays back. And I'll use these occasionally for backgrounds. But these are, if you weren't going to get anything, don't get these. Okay, the last thing I do using the way of brushes are these. What they are is they're brushes that I've worn out and I've just taken them, stuck them in a pencil sharpener to sharpen the ends to a point. And they're great for doing highlights and doing little branches and scratching out things. So those you probably already have. You just got to sharpen some old brushes. Now how can you tell when a brush is getting old? This brush here is, I think these are both the same size. But one is a six and one is a four. Let's see if I have a new version of a four. Yeah, here's a new one. This is a new version of a four and an old version of a four. And the way you can tell when they wear out is the bristles will become shorter. And the brush has a tendency to flare. And if you see here, if I turn on edge, See how this one here is fatter than this one? And what happens, and this is important, paint gets down inside this part of the brush. This is called the ferrule. And what happens is it hardens and it makes the brush, the bristles in it want to flare out because the paint gets down inside there deep. So once it starts to flare out a lot, and this is, um, this is right on the edge. If it flares out much more, I'll have to throw it away or make one of these brushes out of it these little pointers but what happens is one that starts to flare you will um, have to throw it out and you see it's also starting to wear it's, it's a little bit like an eighth of an inch shorter than the other one in terms of the how much hair is there and this one isn't brand new so if I had a brand new one it'd probably be a little bit longer and I'm going to talk about washing how you wash brushes here in a few minutes and um that's how you'll keep that from this flaring to, from happening. But it just is going to happen no matter what. So that's how you can tell if your brushes are getting old. And your brushes should have a beautiful, nice spring to them. If they don't and they're all stiff, then you're ready for new brushes. And people re are too slow to replace their brushes. They need to, You need to get rid of them when they're bad and get new ones. Okay, now what I want to do is talk about palette knives. These are the type of palette knives I like to use. And the reason I like these is because the small ones I can do detail work with. And then this larger one, go ahead and clean it, is, and keep your palette knives very, very clean, is for doing scraping and for smearing and for painting with. So you can do, you can paint with them and you can scrape off with them. What I like, and when I show you some background techniques, I'll show you some cool things you can do to backgrounds with these. Now, the reason I like these is they're rounded all the way around. They don't have any sharp corners. Let me show you what one looks like. This is what one looks like with a sharp corner. See, it comes to a point here. And where that's bad is if you're scraping off, these sharp points will have a tendency to dig in the canvas, and it peels the paint completely off in that spot and leaves a mark. Whereas these round ones will have less of a tendency to do that. So these particular ones are Creative Craft. They're made by the company that owns Jerry's and ASW. American, what is it? Um, Art Supply Warehouse. I think they own this company called Creative Mark. But anyway, so it's kind of a knockoff company. So the brushes and the 
palette knives are pretty inexpensive but I really like the shape of these and I think you can probably find these shapes in other companies but that's just what I've used okay now this one is a T1 a T2 and a T7 if you want to get those exact ones again there's not necessarily any magic to those you can do whatever you want to do with other ones but those are the ones I use last thing here this is known as a paint scraper it looks like a palette knife but it's actually a scraper it's like a knife and it's beveled on each edge and then what this is for is if your paintings dry and you want to scrape off some paint to repaint an area this is the, what, what you use it's called a paint scraper very cool okay the last thing here on this little section is a couple more things actually is this is a a scraper and I suggest that you use a glass palette and what you'll use this scraper for is to scrape the paint off your palette and clean it up and wipe it off and then move on to a new clean palette so these you get at a hardware store for a couple bucks the razor blades inside are the single edge blades and they are very easily replaced you just take off the paper and slide the other one out slide the other one in you might want to keep a pair of pliers in your studio for that okay great